There is no purgatory for war criminals. They go straight to hell. The Russian invasion has begun. And just a few minutes ago, for the second time this hour, we have heard air raid sirens. Vladimir Putin said he was confident that he had the support of the Russian people to launch a massive and bloody invasion of Ukraine. Well, here are his people protesting in the streets of Moscow just today under the threat of arrest. They openly defied Vladimir Putin and demanded peace. Ми вже видаємо зброю і будемо видавати для захисту нашої землі всім, всім бажаючим, всім спроможним захищати наш суверенітет. Від кожного громадянина України залежить майбутнє нашого українського народу. Time specific target of the Russian for already eight years. Me is just a symbol. We are not afraid of them. Snake Island is off the coast of Odessa, some distance in fact, and appears to have been uh, attacked by a Russian warship. Будем защищаться. Вы оккупанты, вы фашисты, вы пришли на нашу землю. Какого хера вы пришли с оружием к нам? Не наступать, защищаться. Возьмите семечки, положите курицу, чтобы хоть потом уже раз и тогда вы заплятся. Наступая, вы будете видеть наши лица, не наши спины, наши лица. And that's that, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks to the Midas Touch Brothers. And uh, yes, I think at least us Democrats stand united against Vladimir Putin and Russia. I wish I could this I wish I could say the same for the GQP. Not so much. Not so much. Laura Ingram today on Fox News was busy saying that. It's vile or something that they were, uh, I think Joni told me, uh, uh, somebody told me, uh, let's see, Laura, Joni did, Laura Ingram mocked the Ukrainian president's plea for peace as pathetic and vile is an understatement to describe this woman. You're right, Joni. Unfreaking believable. We have a network in this country that would rather support Russia than its own country. What does that say to you? What does that say to you, all you GQPers, all the people that I argue with on a daily basis at the pub? What does it say about you if you're rooting for Putin? What kind of American are you? So you get mad when a football player takes a knee because he's disgracing our flag. But you don't seem to care that a network and a bunch of the people that you vote for are rooting and praising Vladimir Putin as he attacks 
innocent people in Ukraine. What does that say about you? I ask you. You were mad they took a knee. Yeah, you didn't like it. disgraced the flag. But you're okay with praising our enemy. Let that sink in, folks. Let that sink in. We actually have a network here and a bunch of people that are happy that this is happening. So they could blame Joe Biden, who bears no credit for this war. As I've been tweeting out to try and correct the jackaloons on the right, my friends at the pub, and people around this state and this country that are happy that this is happening. What does that say about you? Think about that. And that is a disgrace to our country. Is It is unpatriotic just as much as the insurrection has been. I am rooting for Ukraine. The great Ron Filipkowski was on this show on Thursday. He said, John, don't count the Ukrainians out. This is their land. They're a huge country, the biggest country in Europe. Don't count them out. They'll fight until the end. They don't want Russian troops in their country. No, they don't. And guess what? The Russian people don't want their military fighting a war in this country. The only person that wants a war is little Dick Vladimir, who's being praised by little Dick Trump, the dotard himself, who would rather praise the enemy than praise America. And that's where we are in this country. It's a sad state of affairs. They supported the insurrectionists. People who wielded the Confederate flag in our capital for the first time in its history. Donald Trump said if he became president again, he'd pardon them. This is America? This, these are patriots? You are okay with that, aren't you? Yeah, you are. And you don't get that Trump has been a Russian asset since the 80s. Come on, people. Craig Unger, American Compromat. Lincoln's Bible, Greg Olia. Yuri Svets. A CI, a KGB intelligence agent said that Trump was an asset of Russia. Putin plays him like a puppet. But you turn your backs on the facts because the fucking facts don't gel with your narrative. They don't. They don't gel with your narrative, do they? I don't think so. So you keep on. Keep on watching that Fox News. Keep on getting your your weak brains manipulated by Rupert Murdoch. Keep it up. Trump loves the poorly educated, and you are one of them. There's the link to donate. PayPal.me slash John Melendez Inc. Let me say hi to Carl Jacobson, my Danish brethren, Joni Heisenberg, King Cap from Japan, uh, J. 
Joni, I got to find this clip of Laura Ingram correcting Trump. Trump thought an attack launched by Russia was by the United States. He thought America was attacking Ukraine. This is who they worship. A guy who said we're going to ram the ramparts during the Revolutionary War and take over the airports. This is who you praise and support. What does that say about you? King Cap, greetings from Japan. D World is here. Ashbon Nitsum, I'm guessing from Denmark. Uh, Shorty One is here. CB, Cat. Nikki B, my moderator in chief. Love you, baby. Brain Shatterer. Hi, John. We all think could use something a little positive. Can you talk about your Jeep Leno had? WCC fix. I'm almost done with my video. Oh, and would love to add some insight from you on it. Yeah, anytime. Anytime, brother. I I just don't have that car anymore, but I'll certainly help you. Just, to, you know, DM me on uh, DM me on Twitter. That's the uh, pimp my ride uh, when they pimped out my Jeep. And the tires were so big, it was so high in the air, I had to sell it. <laughs> Marco V193. But they did put in a gumball machine for me, and I appreciate that. MJ, da MJ Daniel, William Nichols. I start exactly at noon PST. Mark P is here. Uh, I got everyone's suggestions for guests. Admiral Sulu. Um, and I did reach out to at least one of the guests. Um, and uh, unfortunately, her friend's father had passed away so she couldn't do it today but hopefully she'll do it soon john from las vegas diana olson from facebook but i'll tell you the beer on the balcony today you are going to love become a patreon a youtube member at patreon.com slash a stuttering john it is with one of my best friends danny i speak a lot about him in my book and we will take a walk down our Truant younger years when we were little <laughs> derelicts. <laughs> Carlene Martin from Iowa, Sherry P, Forrest Ritchie from Kentucky, Mark Hurley from Ireland, um, Krista Barker from Facebook, J.M. Vandy, Kenny Gill from Melbourne, Australia, Alan Scott, Amy Marion, uh, Diana Olson from Arlington, Texas. Uh, hiya, peeps. My mom is here. J.M. Bandy with the badge and Nancy Cox, Midas Touch. Yes, thank you for that video. Brett, Ben, and Jordy, what a great job that you did. I already retweet. I did. I retweeted it. It's getting now from me over 300 of the retweets, but what a great job. I love the Midas Touch brothers. I feel like they're my brothers. I swear to God. Yvonne Watkin, um, good as gold is here. Uh, just trying to get some. Carol Herbert from Quebec. Andrew McCready from Ontario. Uh, Russell Johnson. Uh, I love your work in Gilgan's Island. Amy D. Nice Linville from Facebook. Michelle Johnson Warnes. Captain Turp. These are troubling times to see the Republicans cravenly siding with Putin is terrifying. It is. Angie Bailey from Facebook. Don't forget you can donate with Facebook stars. Frank and Smithberry with the badge. Artist Caverlin. Uh, uh, let's see. You're welcome, Midas Touch. I love you guys, bro. All bros. <laughs> Sean Wallace from Facebook. We still have to have a beer, Midas Touch. Kimberly, Kimberly Glanz from Kent, Ohio. Uh, Ziggy, Brian King, uh, uh, Shelly Hotel, and Bob Carmody. Uh, MG Daniel, I think I said. D McCann, Coretta Burke from Facebook. Uh, Lauren Ibsen with the badge. Um, 
Let's see. Uh, Angie Bailey from Facebook. A lot more Facebook people coming. Robin Masters, which doesn't show up on your YouTube numbers, but I don't care. Hal gave me the the suggestion, and Hal is a smart mother effer, so I, I will take his suggestion. And you know what? Hal Vitor, I finally got my first payoff from Stars, so I appreciate it. William Nichols. Um, uh, let's see. Anita Blake. Uh, Jerry C. Uh, Gabriel Killian Entertainment. D. McCann. Uh, first, Super Chat. Chris, the 007 mil. Thanks for the five bucks. The current GQP, very Madison Square Garden Hitler supported circa 1930s. I agree, Krista. I totally agree. Keep those super chats coming. It is super chat sun, super chat Saturday. Angelina FL24. I'm thinking about my flight to Florida tomorrow. Robin Masters, uh, La Maison, Maison du Chat, uh, Liz Gallo from Facebook, John Davenport. Uh, from Facebook, uh, I'm getting to the end of the line here. C. Johnson, Monica Caton, uh, Yvonne Watkin, let's see, read off THDL. Uh, uh, <laughs> can't wait for Trump's speech tonight. Wonder if I'll have a Russian translator on stage with him as he fondles the balls of Putin. Do you realize Putin was playing Fox News in Russia? That's how bad it gets. Type me, Ziggy, uh, Jacqueline uh, Maison, Chapman, Joe Weatherford with the badge, um, Gypsy Mama, Nails by Sherry, Rick Cap, Benny Loco, my other moderator, Super Chat Saturday. Thanks for the five bucks, Janie Buck. Um, Liz Gow, look, people, it's going to come and bite the Republicans in the ass. Gypsy Mama, I you know I reached out to you know Biden and the and the DNC chair Jamie Harrison and I said guys you got to do better with your messaging now's the time the Republicans are the GQP party they are the Putin party Tony Macaroni Kevin Murphy I don't want to keep my guests waiting Kenny Gill uh, Joni McGillick uh, Alan Scott Joe 1241. The Russian military will turn on Putin. That's what I'm thinking, too. Type me. Yeah, I just watched Brian Tyler Cullen interview President Biden. Everyone should watch when John shows on. Yeah, I'm going to play a clip from it, even though Brian Tyler Cohen blew me off to be a guest. Said his agents said no. I said, you know what? Trust your art, not your agent. William Zavala, Kevin Murphy, you know, and that, and that was one of the people I was talking about a while back, Johnny Wright. You know, Thomas McNulty, how are you, buddy? Uh, Chris Wilson, Teresa Horsley. We get more and more people coming, man. I'm Geronimo, Trina Miner, Alan Scott, Jackie Hobson. All right. Julie Elizabeth. Okay. One more, and then I got to go get to, get, get to my guest page, CM, with the badge. Okay. Uh, my first guest today, Daily Beast. Uh a reporter and author of the John McCain book that I did not know. Cliff Schechter is here. How are you, buddy? I'm doing well, man. How are you doing? You know what? Let me just say, Mark Hurley, thanks for the five bucks from Irish Quid, I think. Black Mind is mad at protests in D.C. Trump uh, slurries down to the bunker. Ukraine attacked by Russia. Zelensky stays put and asks for more ammunition. Who's the real man? Thank you, Mark. Yeah. That couldn't be truer. That that is a great thing. Cliff. Can I say something to you quickly though? Yeah. I wasn't sure I was going to come on, but my agents told me I should. So <laughs> no, my, I, I really think it was me, my 15-year-old, and my 12-year-old, and we all agreed unanimously that this was the place to be. Well, so. I think it's lame that Brian Tyler Cohen and I are on the same team. He's yeah. no bigger. He's no bigger than the Midas Touch Brothers. In fact, the Midas Touch Brothers, uh, you know, dwarf him. 
I mean, you know, I mean, not dwarf him. You know, they're way bigger than him. Dude, you were on Howard Stern. You did the voice for Jay Leno. I don't care <laughs> if, like, you got into the political game later and, and, you know, he may have more YouTube followers or whatever. If you go out there and ask people who they've heard of, you or him, I have a pretty good idea uh, who they would come up with. I grew up listening to you. Um, <laughs> so, when I, so, I mean, I don't know. I just, I never believe in any of that crap. If somebody's evil... Or, some, or there's a problem that's different, but the, the what, I'm too big for you? Is that the reason? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, that's no, of course reason. it is. You know, I, of yeah. course it is. And and it's sad because because we play in the same team. I'm not here to trash the guy. I just think, Cliff, it's cowardly to say my agent says no. You know what? Well, if my agent, yeah, go ahead, if, go you, ahead. if you ask me to do your show or whatever, and my agents say, no, it's too small for you. I'd say, fuck off. He's my friend. He speaks the same language as me. I'm doing his show. I don't listen to any agent. You it know. reminds me I need to have you on, on our show, by the way. But, but, um, but, yeah, I mean, look, my show, you know, it's just an audio podcast. We, you know, we can get 10, 15,000 downloads, you know, which we're excited about. I'm not, it's not, you know. I'm not saying it's not huge or anything. It, it's bigger than, you know, most podcasts because most have like five listeners, but it's not huge. And yet we've had on Jake Tapper, Rosie O'Donnell, James Carville, you know, like because people realize we know what we're talking about. And, you know, we're talking to a very specific audience of reporters and whatever. And so people come on, you know, like I don't sit there and judge shows. I don't I don't I don't even know how many, you know, people watch or listen to your show. I don't care. I mean, of course. Oh, I, I do. You know, like I thought you were cool for years, anyhow, just because of, of how I grew up listening to you. So it wouldn't matter to me. But you know, if we're on the same team, we're on the same team. I, I agree with you 100, percent man. Just take the time and I, again, I don't know Brian Tyler Cohn from like a, a hole in the wall. I've never no, met. No, I don't him. either. And I'm not. Him. So I don't know what the deal is. I just I would do the show. Well, it just it's just so odd. I've had James Carville on. I've had Jay Leno on. I've had Larry the Cable Guy on. I've had Richard Lewis on. I've had Congressman Cicilline. I've had Congressman right. Swalwell. I've had, I what? mean, I mean, you know, I, you know, Congressman Caston. And then your, I've had Rick Wilson from the Lincoln Project. I've had no, Mary right. Trump on. That's right. We had both of them on too. We, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't get, but I don't Brian get... and Tyler Cohen is too big to come on. I mean. Yeah. I mean, I mean, seriously, Brian, seriously. Again, like I don't, I don't know him, so I'm not going to talk trash. I, I'll just say, if that's the reason, that's that's sad. That's all. No, I'm a fan of his. That's the thing. I yeah. I support him. I retweeted him today, but I just I I hate when people go to the excuse my agent said well, no and we're like you know again we're we're in a somewhat different war and i hate using that term but you you know as i was sitting in the waiting room and watching your you you talk about things you brought up all the the putinite republicans you know i had a, a twitter battle this past week i know that sounds almost weird and geeky but a back and forth with glenn greenwald who essentially is in putin's left right and other who knows which pockets because he's kissing his ass and you know like we the, those the and he's basically a republican he is republican now like you've got all these right wingers or people who once called themselves left wingers are siding with putin and we've got this battle to fight so we should all like be on the same side i don't care if you have 15 followers or 15 million you know if you're on, on the right side here fighting against like a, what is a worldwide authoritarian movement if people haven't noticed you know, whether it's in Hungary with Orban, who, by the way, Donald Trump and Tucker Carlson have endorsed. Tucker does his show over there sitting on his lap, basically. You know, uh, you know, whether it's Putin and, and what he's doing right now and, and the, you know, the, the heroism of the people in Ukraine. I mean, that doesn't inspire people in this country to stand up against this fascist force that we're fighting against. I don't know what will. So I don't care how many followers you have. If you're on our side. No, but I actually have a damn good following. I, I mean, I know you do. I, when I said you, I mean one. I'm not no, talking about I know. you. I know you do. I, I, I meant like I don't care. I know you know. Like obviously, you're out there doing much more famous in the political world things for a while. I know you do. I just meant I've gone on podcasts with people who I know have a hundred listeners before, and I don't care because oh, yes, so I know they're on the right side of, of stuff. 
So yeah, uh, Carl Jacobson, thank you so much, my Danish brethren, for the fifteen bucks. Super S Saturday, John. Been keeping my nose at grindstone lately. Miss you live. Hi, Cliff. Uh, hey, let me uh, gravy dog. Thanks for the five bucks, Cliff. What happened with Zeb? He seems to burn bridges. Um, I haven't spoken about this, and I'm not going to go into all the details. This, I, someone's asked me about Zev Shalev, and, and um, he and some other folks uh, who you know and people you've had on this show, he, he did a report on, you know, Lincoln's Bible, LB, is, you know, the, who she is, and on, on Allison Gill, whose mother she wrote. And they're in a spat, and I'm part of uh, um, Allison Muller's network, uh, my podcast is. Um, I'm not the, – that's, I'm just mentioning that. Uh, I don't know what the details are. I don't know who's called who what. I don't know. You know, all I know is he said some things about them. And until I know whether it's true or not, I'm going to I'm staying out of it because to me, I don't get involved in fights when I don't know what the truth is. So I'm not attacking anybody right now. I'm just saying I don't know the truth and I need to know the truth before I weigh in on things. So, well, I, I, I do know the truth and uh, I DM'd. Uh, LB and Greg Oliar and Zeb, because I don't, I'm not taking sides on this, but they all responded. Zeb had, Zeb's convinced on what he is accusing LB of, but my own opinion, I don't know. LB couldn't be a sweeter person, and I don't believe any of it, and no disrespect to Zeb. I'm not taking sides, but. I don't. That's what I've always I, said. Like, I know, don't agree with. I don't agree with the accusations that Zeb. Just my own opinion. I don't think. I think they're misfounded. Right. Well, I would say, with my opinion, is when you make those kinds of accusations. And again, I, I've never met any of these people in person. But Allison, I've spoken to. Uh, LB, I've spoken to. She came on my podcast. They both are terrific. Zeb, I always. I've only been on his show twice i really liked it when i went on i love um, the guy but but yeah. you've got it you've got to bring to me before i'm gonna i'm gonna believe that about people when, when you, the, the burden's on you when you're making those kinds of accusations yes and as you said lb and allison have seemed like nothing but very nice people so if i don't know what the truth of it is and i don't you're gonna have to come with a lot more and until you do um you know to me going on your show is endorsing what you're saying about people i'm friends with and so i'm just not gonna do it i'm, I'm yeah. staying out of it I totally understand that. Mark P, love you, brother. Thanks for the five bucks. Big Thanks, fan. Cliff, Mark. Big fan, Cliff. Enjoy your appearances on Seska, Steph, etc. What happened to Zev show last night? You and Kimberly Johnson were supposed to appear. I said my thing, and Kimberly, you know, tweeted out she's spoken for herself. It's a similar, similar thing, which is we just we need some more. I need to know more truth before, you know, I'm doing that in any case. Tony I would Macaroni. rather we all be on the same side and fight the bad guys here. Yeah, I, I know. Exactly. Let's not fight bit. amongst each other, you know. Um, Tony Macaroni, thanks for the $55 in Norwegian Krona. Hey, there is a drummer in the house. What is the, uh, What kind of kid is behind you? Uh, I should know that better. I promise I will next time. My 15-year-old, um, and I love it because he's not into pardon everybody. I say it's a Ludwig. I say it's a Ludwig. I think you, I think you may be right about that, actually. He, he is... Like he'll come up here and he'll play like "What It Takes" by Aerosmith. Go look in the back and see that. I'll go look, sure. And he'll do it. I want to see if I'm way. correct. I say it's a Ludwig, or is it a Tama? Where would it say? It would say <laughs> on the bass drum. On the bass drum. Oh, is it center stage? Uh, what does it say? PDP. <laughs> I don't worry I'm about it. I'm crawling around back here. Yeah, don't case, worry about it. In any case, I, I, when I when he gets ready, I, I'll bring him on here at every other show because the kid's incredible, and he's gonna he's gonna bring back uh, the rockings of of your Guns and Roses and Van Halen and Zeppelin and stuff instead of all this let's call it newer stuff out there that some of us are not as fond of. Okay, so before we even get started on Ukraine, I'm gonna play you a video that was really well done. And, you know, like, I'm always scouring the web, as you know, and, you know, as we get ready to do our shows, and and it's, you know, I take pride in being prepared on every show. So, so here we go, because I, because I know a lot of the stuff that I play, people haven't seen, you know what I mean? Like, even the Midas Touch stuff, sometimes, you know, I'll yeah. play it, you know, so they can see it, because it, it's such good work, you know what I mean? 
No, I mean, you never know. I mean, right? Like a lot of people have seen it on Twitter, but not everybody here is either on Twitter or been on Twitter today or, you know, so, and those guys obviously have other channels besides Twitter, but the more people you can get this stuff out to, the better, right? So. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, Tony Macaroni, you know, thanks for the $22 of the Legion Corona. PDP oh. is DW. Oh, it's a DW set. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I'm so, so dumb about this stuff. I even took a few lessons with him so I can play some basic stuff, and I'm still too stupid, apparently, to know what uh, what kind of set it is, but, you know. All right, so I'm so I'm going to play this for everybody. Most of it. And, and it, what it is, Cliff, is just for, and, you know, and, and believe me, I was one of these people trying to understand what happened. What? Why is this happening in Ukraine? Yeah. Obviously, it's not Joe Biden's fault. This has been going on since 2014 uh, or even, two, I think it's 2013. But I'm going to yeah. play this. It's so well done. It's a three-minute video. But for everybody out there, it'll explain the whole thing in three minutes. Are you having a hard time following what's going on in Ukraine? Then this video is for you. If you watch the news these days, it can feel like Vladimir Putin is holding all the cards, holding Ukraine and the West hostage. But that couldn't be further from the truth. Putin is actually operating from a position of severe weakness with a potentially disastrous invasion as his last resort. Let me tell you why. First, let's do some quick background. Ukraine used to be a Soviet republic, and for most of its post-Soviet independence, its leaders operated in close association with Russia. But then in 2013, something happened. The Ukrainian people realized that a political and economic dependence on Russia was a road to nowhere. So they rose up and they demanded closer ties with the European Union. Putin and his cronies in Ukraine, they panicked and they gunned down the protesters. Now that backfired big time. Putin's allies were run out of the country and the nation elected ardent pro-Europe and pro-US leadership. In response, Putin invaded Crimea and he invaded Eastern Ukraine. But frankly, that just hardened Ukrainian people's anti-Russia sentiments. Still, Putin's desire to control Ukraine, it didn't go away. So now he's moved 150,000 troops to Ukraine's border, and he's threatened a full-on invasion. Putin hoped that this threatened invasion, all of these troops on Ukraine's border, would upend Ukraine's government, collapse it, or maybe create tensions and fissures within NATO, weakening the alliance, or result in the West folding and agreeing to his demands. But none of that happened. In fact, the opposite happened. The Zelensky government didn't fall. The United States and the West rallied to support Ukraine's government. NATO and Europe came together, rallied to support Ukraine's sovereignty. And Putin's list of demands went nowhere. The West did not give in. Now, faced with this reality, Putin has only two ways out, back down or proceed with an expensive, costly, and potentially disastrous invasion of the largest country in Europe. It's hard to fathom what the biggest land war in Europe since 1945 will look like, but it will likely be long and deadly. The Ukrainian people are not going to submit. They are going to fight back. And the sanctions from the United States and the rest of the world, they're going to be devastating. Nothing like the relatively mild sanctions Russia has endured so far. The combination of the cost of the war and the cost of the sanctions, they're going to threaten Putin's hold on power. And all for what? To force Ukraine back into Russia's orbit against Ukraine's wishes? A nation that used to rely on Russia willingly? All of this just to achieve pre-2013 status quo, but with thousands dead and a Russian economy in ruins? When you think of it that way, how is Putin holding all the cards? That was well put. It's a great video just to show everybody who doesn't know the backstory, you know, and yeah. I'm, like, you know, I had, you know, Ron Filipkowski, mm -hmm. he was on, yeah. on Thursday and he, and he schooled me. He said, John, you know, the Ukrainians aren't going to lie down here. 
you, now. You know, this is not going to be like such an easy battle. It's like when you go into Afghanistan. Every country's tried it, and every country has lost. Every time you do one of these occupations, and it's quite clear who the occupiers are and who's being occupied. Um, I mean, it's amazing to me that, they, you know, people don't learn history's lessons. And by the way, that has included us in, in yeah. Iraq, for example. Yeah. Um, it, it, you know, they, they'll outweigh you. You know, at Ukraine, I mean, I have to say, I've even been impressed. I mean, it's incredible, right? I mean, you see the, the president of the country stand there ready to, to, to mix it up and the former Miss Ukraine out there with a machine gun or whatever she was holding. Right? I mean, the, it's, these are people that, the kinds of people that have the means and, and backgrounds to escape, and they're not. They're staying there and they're fighting and people are risking their lives and everything we'd like to think hopefully we would do in the same situation. And, um, you know, I, I thought it was going to go badly for Russia to begin with. I thought they'd lose a lot of troops. It would be tough, but, you know, they would be triumphant. I'm not so sure anymore. And when I say triumphant, I meant in the short run. Eventually, they'll get bled. They'll get blood of treasure. They'll get blood of blood. Um, but now I'm not even so sure they're going to they're going to succeed in their initial plan. They haven't taken any of the major cities yet. They keep you know taking what the airport and losing it again. They can't seem to. Uh, I mean, it's when you fight against a determined force defending their homeland, and everybody can look at, at what Putin's doing here. Like there's ju there's no justification for this. There is no. zero. But well, here's the thing, Cliff, and this is the one thing that like you know, that Ron pointed out and, and I've been thinking about it and the Ukrainian people are more motivated than the Russian troops. Absolutely. The Russian troops, a lot of the Russian troops don't want to be there. Yep. You know? So at some point they might just lie down. In fact, I read some stories that the Russian troops are now going into Ukrainian homes looking for clothes and yep. food because they're starving and freezing. So, actually, I've read, there are already a couple of cases where they have just put their arms down because there, there was one case of a guy, I don't know, he didn't give his name because he's smart, uh, was just sort of, you know, one of the major news outlets was saying, I, we were told we were coming in here for exercises. Once we were, were being told to shoot on, he's like, I'm not doing this. Um, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I, that's only one case, but I have to believe there's more like that. They don't want to be there. Why would they want to be there? It makes no sense. And, it, you know, Russia has a, plenty of its own problems. It's ludicrous. And and you know what really drives me crazy, Cliff? And this is something that I swear to fuck, you know, it. I can't tell you how angry I want to rip somebody's head off. That's how angry I am about it. Is yeah. to hear people blaming Joe Biden for Vladimir Putin. 60, what, 62% of Americans think it wouldn't have happened under Trump. It's like, it I is mean, like. This kind of idiocy. Vladimir Putin beats, you know, uh, you know, to his own drum or whatever the expression is. You know, he, you know, he's not going to give a crap who's in office in America. If he wants Ukraine to beat his chest so he can look strong, he's going to do it. You know, it doesn't matter if Trump, put it this way, if Trump was in office, Trump would be sending him money. <laughs> yeah, well, there, you know, I, I would answer that in two ways. I would say one. One of the major reasons, not the only one, but one of the main reasons this is happening is because he was successful, Putin, in getting Trump elected. And Trump then spent four years undermining our relationship with NATO, uh, working to undermine. He our held relationship back with aid to Ukraine. He held back aid, extorted them. He remember the, the magically the only thing that changed about the Republican Party platform in 2016 was they no longer uh, would ex express support for Ukraine if Russia invaded. I mean, this has been, you know, basically they put in a plant. And this guy spent, I mean, who knows? We know what he, 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 he ate and flushed. And God knows what else with secrets and documents and national security. Who knows what he shared with Putin? Remember their private conversations where they wouldn't even let the translators in? I mean, yep. you know, so he spent all those years weakening the NATO relationship. I mean, obviously, Putin had other successes. Leave with the United Kingdom, which weakened the EU. I mean, you know, but it's those kinds of, of, of events that led to this. And Trump was one of the big reasons that Putin thought maybe that we were all so divided and weak that he could do this. That's part A. And part B, when they say this stupid thing, well, oh, he wouldn't go in with Trump because he wouldn't have to. Why would he? Why would you go in when Trump's in office? Trump is say, basically handing you the keys to everything anyhow. You know, Trump is getting rid of sanctions that are on you. Trump is sitting there allowing you secretly making all sorts of deals with you to allow you to do this, to do that. I mean, no, because the, the, the whole thing is he wouldn't want to draw attention, more attention to his relationship with Trump 
by invading Ukraine. And he wanted to, to get as much out of that as possible. And he did. Spent four years getting as much out of that as he could. So, I mean, it just, it's just it's ludicrous to think that the, the reason why he wouldn't invade with Trump in there, because he wouldn't have to. That's why. Uh, Tony Macaroni, thanks for the $55 in Norwegian Krona. Putin is done. Russia will be set back 30 years. He excluded, uh, be excluded from every economic banking system except China, and China's economy is about to collapse. And then uh, 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 Krista 007 Mill, thanks for the five bucks. If Trump was in office, he'd be sending troops to help Putin. Yeah. See, I, I do disagree with you. I do think Putin would have gone in even if Trump was president. I think... maybe. You know, I think he has an imperialistic uh, uh, nature. I think he wants to, you know, bring back the Soviet Union. And, oh, I definitely you know, agree with you on all that. I just was making the point that Trump didn't deter him. No, in he other did. Words, it wasn't like, oh, I won't go in because I'm scared of Trump. I will because I'm not scared of Biden. It's he he probably he either was playing the long game there and figured if Trump could get reelected, he was getting so much stuff. So many sort of the, of the treaties he wanted and relationships he wanted and undermining the West in so many ways that maybe he'd play a longer game before he'd go in. But eventually, you are correct. He always was going to go into. I mean, he said it out loud. This is not something like we need to like, oh, I wonder what he's thinking. He, he's pissed at the old Soviet empire being lost. And at times, he's even brought up that he's pissed at the old czarist empire you know from the 17th 18th 19th centuries lost i mean he thinks finland should be you know should be there so he thinks all of all of the, that all of the the soviet satellite country should be theirs if there's a country with a stan at the end of it he thinks they should belong to him you know he thinks he took they took persia back in the which is now iran he thinks they should control that i mean we could go on and on with all armenia azerbaijan i mean you know he, he thinks all these places should belong to him because he because he feels like they were weakened they lost the mighty you know, Russian Empire. He wants it all back, and Ukraine is the beginning of that. And did you see the? Uh, you know the the Russian foreign minister said if Sweden or Finland joins uh, uh, NATO, they will. The Russians will do. Uh, you know, they'll take military action. Now yeah, it's the same idea, but it's the same threat. Now here's now, now here's my take on this. Let him. The, Putin has just exhausted 75% of his troops are now in Ukraine. He can't be fighting wars with Finland and Sweden right now. And if Finland and Sweden, as soon as they sign that you yeah. know, contract to be with NATO, they'll get fucking pummeled by the, all of us, the yeah. EU. I mean, I mean, they will get, I mean. In some see, ways, that would be the aggressive move right now is that now that he's attacked Ukraine, to immediately let Finland and Sweden in. I know it's a risk, but on some level, look, this guy's got nuclear weapons, and if he wants to blow up the entire world and take himself down with it, he can do that. I don't, I, he, see, he doesn't seem, he's not a religious nut. He doesn't seem to want to do that, but he wants his domination. He can't do that if he's dead. So you're always going to be taking some risk, and you have to, because he does have a nuclear arsenal. But I, you know what? Like, we need to be aggressive. And we need to be proved that we're not going to take this guy's shit or he'll keep doing it. And I think part of that is I'd let them in right now. I'd put them in right now and be like, okay, yep. now they're in NATO too. Yep. To be some of the I agree with you because you know what? At some point, and I and I tweeted this out and I got a lot of crap because I said, you know, you know, I say we freaking, you know, do drone strikes, you know, and then, oh, so now you want to kill our kids, to, you know, to go fight. I go, drone strikes are not, you know, are not human. But anyway, drones, drones are not kids. No, no. But, you know, like, I don't give a shit. You know, I, I mean, if Putin's going to threaten us with a nuclear attack, game over for the whole world. Correct. And he can I do mean, that for anything, right? Like, I mean, the point is, is that if, if, you, if you're willing to be to, to allow him to extort you with that threat, then if he knows that, he can just be like, I mean, hell, you can be like, I want Alaska back. Remember, they sold that to us. And, yeah. you know, if you don't give it to me tomorrow, I'm nuking you. I want the United Kingdom. I want the south of France. I like the vacation there. I want, I mean, he can ask for anything at that point. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, you know, he could ask for the Lakers. I'd give him the Knicks, by the way. <laughs> and this is from a former Knicks fan, but I'm sorry. <laughs> um, 
But I mean, like he can ask for anything, right? So I mean, you know, you got to keep that in mind and say we have to stand up strong and we have to stand up with the intention of that he's not going to just blow up the entire world because there's nothing we can do to stop him from doing that. Anyhow, anyhow. Yeah, and Rose uh, Monteverdi says Putin threatened NATO with nukes. See, this is what I mean. Yep. It, you know, we could blow up the world, what, three or four times over? I mean, Correct. there are so I, I was telling my son the other day when I was driving home from school, there are so many nuclear warheads pointed at Russia. I'm talking from, from us, China, yep. England, Germany, France. I mean, there are Israel. so many. They don't have them. Yeah. So many that are pointed at Russia. The first nuclear missile that he launches, it's over. He's going to be inundated with. Uh, right I mean, there. you know, like, I mean, yes, he, he that, like, whatever. And how many submarines are out? How many submarines are in water right now? Armed with nuclear warheads. Right, right. He will be done. And yeah, he'll right. launch all of his. Yes. But that's going to be. Look, this, is, this, this would be horrific. And I'm not trying to say, hey, you know, who cares? Like, to be clear, this would be horrific. But but in the end, you can't let somebody dictate terms for the entire world by saying, I'm going to I'm going to launch my nuclear arsenal, because, again, then he can say that about anything. No, I and agree. Then, so in the end, it's like, well, then why don't we just hand over the United States to him? Because he may say hand over the United States or I'm going to launch nuclear weapons. At some point, we have to assume that he, what he wants, because he's a Hitler like character is he wants to dominate people. He wants to be the, the you know, he's not he's not Bin Laden, which would in some ways would scare me more because that guy might be willing to kill himself and kill all of us because he thought he was going to meet however many virgins in, you know, in heaven. Yeah. That's yeah. not that's not Putin. Putin is a guy who wants who, who very much isn't religious and wants to dominate on this earth. And knowing that means he's not going to launch, I don't think, unless it's a last resort and we're going into Russia. We're not going to go into Russia. We're going to defend other places, territories. Yep. So I, I don't I don't see it happening. And yeah, we and Russia's a big country, so he could have his Russia, and this and just leave the rest of the freaking out, you know, the, the rest of the world alone. Look, I got to interrupt this program for a second. Vicky yeah. G asked a very important question. John, what's your favorite non a Russian vodka? Uh, Kettle One. Thank you very much. Kettle One's actually good stuff. Yeah, that's another thing. Like every in every way, this is and and, and I do believe this culturally we should be right now saying nothing Russian. Like, I love it that the Swedish, the Polish, and these other soccer teams are now refusing to play them in the World Cup qualifiers. They're just saying we, we won't play them. Um, I mean, again, it may sound like something something small, but it, it's not. It, it, they, no, their it's legitimacy not. needs to be taken away in every way it can be taken away. That's their businesses, their vodka companies, that's you know, that's the, their, their country in general and their leaders. Everything about them has to be stripped from them. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, nobody should buy Smirnoff. You know, nope. I mean, just I, I mean, just let's keep on. I mean, it's going to look, it's going to hurt his pocketbook. I mean, let's face it, you know, and now that Biden has froze a third of Russian assets in the bank, you know, it, like, I don't know if yeah. he really had it all planned out. It's like. As dumb as when Hitler decided to go to war with the Russians, when he already exactly had, right. you know, our exactly war. Right. He, you know, he two spread himself wars. too thin. He hadn't finished off the United Kingdom yet, which, you know, and instead of just concentrating on the United Kingdom where they had full operational, you know, power to bomb, you know, they had France, you know, where, where they'd taken over instead. He, he, his arrogant ass goes and starts a two front war. And that's probably the, the only reason we're still here. Yep. You know what I mean? And, and and I think this this a lot there's a lot of that. That's a brilliant analogy by you. I mean, I think a lot of that same stupidity is in what Putin's doing here. He's in this huge country and he was getting away with all sorts of crap and he was undermining people's elections like ours, you know, trying to help elect extremists. He got the, he helped make sure the British left the, the EU. He was getting a lot of what he wanted. And then he goes and he does this. Yep. Um, and and, I, yep. and he's turned the whole world against him. I mean. I, you know, it almost brings a tear to my eye, uh, you know, when I see people in Japan and in Mexico and yeah. in America and, and all over the world supporting the Ukrainians. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's like it, it's really kind of a moving thing it is. for all of us to see. I mean, Putin is now the most hated man in America, probably next to Donald Trump. 
Correct. And I mean, that, he, and, and his, he's, his, his approval, such that it is, has gone so far down. And you can tell that how they've lost the information war and everything else, which is astounding if you think about it, um, and how much damage they've done to themselves. Because all these Republicans, that little, that little uh, turd that here in Ohio with me actually doesn't live far from me here in the neighborhood I'm in. J.D. Vance, who wants to be a senator here, who wrote Hillbilly Elegy. You know, he came out six days ago and was like, who the hell cares about Ukraine? Now suddenly he's on TV, you know, on Fox News saying, oh, it's important we defend Ukraine. What do you think happened? He saw the numbers that even even all the right wingers are turning against Putin. So all these these Republicans, you know, especially the elected officials, you still have your Tucker Carlson traitors and they're all, all, they're all still traitors. Anyhow, they're just pretending. But some of the ones that initially even even, you know, Marge uh, Trailer Green, what'd you call her? Marge Trailer Green. You're still one of my Marjorie Trailer Green. <laughs> Even she came out and, and backed off of support for Putin and said, "Oh, he's a murderer." And that should just tell you what the, what numbers they're seeing because none of them have any courage. They're looking at numbers, no. showing them that 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 Putin's numbers are just collapsing. So what they're doing is, but, is they're they're jumping off. But Cliff, this is the thing. Democrats have to do better with the messaging. Now, and that's yes, another yes. thing. Uh, you saw I retweeted that out. tweet of yours because I talk about this all the time. Yeah. Our lack of willingness to come out and just fucking, pardon me, I don't know if you get in trouble for that. With no, curse all you want. But just, just, to, just say it for fuck's sake. I mean, they say all sorts of stuff that's just not even true. They make up crap all the time. Say it. They're Putin's poodles. They're Putin's puppets, whatever you want to call them. They're Putin's party. But they're like, they, I mean, give people the examples. A bunch of these senators, how many six of them went and sat on the 4th of fucking July, went and groveled before him. Remember that in 2017? Rand Paul basically goes over there and. and Ron and, Johnson. Yes. I mean, they're, 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 you know, John McCain himself stood up and, and, and before he died and said, Rand Paul is a senator from the Kremlin. You know, I mean, like, I'm sorry, like almost their entire party is, is pro Putin at this point. So point that out. You know, we yeah. just we just never do it as aggressively as they do. It drives me nuts. Well, that's you why know? you gotta thank uh, the Midas Touch Brothers, the Love Lincoln Project, yep. Really American, Don Winslow, all these guys who are like really fighting the propaganda war yeah, against they're stepping into this open space because because our, our side doesn't do it. Yep, you know, and so they jump in and they do it, and with and again. I mean, incredibly, all, all the ones you named, incredibly talented people. Yeah. And, in my eyes, they're superstars. You know what I mean? Because, yeah. you know, and, and you know, I'm actually happy. I'm proud to say that I was the first show, believe it or not, Cliff, to have the Midas Touch Brothers on. Were you? After, after their first um, their first video of The Snake. We had them on, and that's mostly part to my producer at the time, but I'll tell you, I mean, and now they're freaking huge. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean and they're great guys. I, I have a but lot they're loyal to me because they'll yeah. come on at least once a month. Yep. You they're know, such nice guys. I like, I mean, I know them all well, and especially I've got a great relationship with Jordy. It's funny just because we're both, we both are, are New Yorker, New York Jews who somehow ended up in Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. So we like to laugh about, uh, our Midwestern commonalities that were both out in the Midwest. But I mean, yeah, I mean, they're, they're all three of them. They're just talented, fantastic guys. We're lucky to have them seriously. Yeah. And I, and I like what Joni Heisenberg said also late night hosts like Seth Meyers, Jimmy Kimmel and Stephen Colbert. Yeah. I mean, look, see, that's the great thing, you know, Yeah, you know, sometimes it takes a little time, you know, and I think this is my prediction I know we don't have that much time until the midterms, but I think people are starting to open their eyes. Maybe I'm crazy, but I think they're starting to go, wait a second. Why are we supporting Putin here? How many right. ants, how many movies? Rocky fucking four. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, exactly. Clint Eastwood's uh what you know, what was the one that he takes the plane? Um uh oh shit. Uh, now you're going back old school. Uh, yeah, the Clint Eastwood one, what, you know, that he you know that he uh I uh, know I loved it. I can't remember the name of it right now. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. He walks in and steals it. That's right. I mean, that was awesome. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, but no, you're right, right? Like, I mean, you know, uh hell, um Red Dawn, baby. The original when we when, yeah. when we kicked the Russians out. Uh, you know, I mean I'm, I'm sorry. It's always been it 
We've always they've always been the enemy. You know, look, if Ronald Reagan and someone tweeted this out, and I agree, if Ronald Reagan was alive right now, Cliff, he'd be I mean, he'd be astonished. He wouldn't I mean, he wouldn't even recognize this party anymore. Yeah. Mr. Gorbachev teared down that wall. And now now his party is supporting this lunatic against innocent Ukrainians. I mean, I mean, this is not the party of Reagan. I mean, no. this is now the party of a big baby who can't admit that he lost. I was watching some of the C PAC and Kimberly Gargoyle, you know, it, you know, Kimberly stuck Gargoyle. her head. I, I love your names. I yeah. really do. Suck her head out of the freaking ground to do her stupid speech. Well, our rigged election. Okay. Okay. Do we know if any parts of her are real anymore? I, I don't no, know. If I don't know. But, to, say that, say that, but, but to me, she's ugly inside and now she's got a fish mouth and and it's a big one. I mean, you know, I almost want to take a hook, you know, like you know, and put a dollar bill and freaking fucking reel her in. There's something there's something about Mary, like in that scene, you could catch yeah, by yeah, the, yeah, you know, but, catch <laughs> but uh which one of my favorite comedies, by the way. But yeah, great movie, yeah. Yeah, but she's going rigged election. Cliff. How many times are they going to keep on saying it was a rigged election when there is mounds of mounds of proof that was one of the safest elections we've ever had? It was not rigged. We know. Of Most of the American people know. Of course. And yet Trump still says, well, you know, it was a rigged election. No, it wasn't. Trump, you're a loser. That's Trump, you're a loser. <laughs> You should get a video of just that and put that out there. I, I mean, seriously, he, he, you know, but they're doing it. Obviously, it's completely, you know, undermine, uh, you know, Democrats. It's to undermine our democracy. It allows them to pass these laws to try to stop people from voting, try to claim that elections in the future weren't fair. I mean, again, this is what fascists do. This is what authoritarians do. They have zero respect for democracy. And so they've, they, you know, that, that's why they do that. And she does it just because she's a clown figure who, who's with Donald Trump's idiot Coke cup son. And like, you know, she, that, that is an easy thing for her to do and stay in the good graces of the family. Um, Cause nobody, I mean, if Fox news fires you for being a, a complete asshole, I'm not sure there's any other place to go after that besides the Trump campaign. Right. I mean, or, or, or OAN or freaking, you know, or 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 blues max yeah i'm just gonna do a commercial um just hold on with me are you a betting man um yeah sometimes i mean i'm not like huge but yes i do sometimes indulge yes i do too so let me get my new copy here uh let's see i uh there we go okay well let me tell you something um Football might be over for the season, but basketball is in full steam for both pro and college hoops. From all the latest odds and totals, player performance props, where the next fire coach is going to land, betonline.ag is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. I bet a whole bunch of prop bets for the Super Bowl. Yeah. The clip, I lost everyone. <laughs> oh, no. Are you betting my, on my bangles here or no? Uh, no, I took the Rams, but I lost due to the spread. Um, head over to the website or use your mobile uh, device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code CLNS50. That's CLNS50 to get started. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.ag is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds right to the Olympic coverage, which is over is the best in the business. From sports right down to your favorite Vegas casino games, betonline.ag is your number one online wagering destination. Betonline.ag, the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports and play your favorite games. Betonline.ag, where the game starts. And um, I, you know, I will say that uh, uh, I, you know, I do use it. Now, I hope you don't mind. I'm, I'm going to bring in the Army Major to, to, to talk with us, Cliff. Oh, works for me. Hey, Army Major Richard Ojeda. This is Cliff Chef, Cliff Schechter from the Daily Beast. What's the name of your John McCain book, Cliff? Uh, it's called The Real McCain. Wouldn't John McCain be really pissed to see what has gone, what has happened to the Republican Party? Uh, uh, absolutely. Uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, he would be livid. He would be livid. 
you know, uh, they, they don't make them like John McCain anymore. And and even as a Democrat, you know, I, I like John McCain. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I for the book. In the book, somewhat critical of him. Obviously, I think I'd say I was very critical. It was around 2008. But I never, you know, his service was always honorable. I never, obviously, I wasn't one of these swift voting garbage. I went after, I thought, politically, I disagreed with him. And now I look at him. And like, I, yeah, I wish we had almost all of his politics back in their party because yeah. their party yeah. is freaking insane. I mean, again, even before he died, he said that about Rand Paul, that Rand Paul was essentially serving the Kremlin, among other things. Like he, he did well, say it like it was. These people need to be found out. They need to be exposed and they need to be dealt with. We should not have anybody in Congress at all that has ties to Russia. Uh, you know, with, with what's going on right now, it is sickening that we got people in this country today that want to act like they support Putin. And 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 Donald Trump has absolutely just come out, you know, and showed his true colors. If you didn't realize that Donald Trump wasn't nothing but a bootlicking uh, a puppet by by Putin, then then you've been asleep because he's proven it by now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, I mean, and you know, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, Clef, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say, if we, you know your history. You know, it's pissed me off after the insurrection that we didn't go after some of these guys and kick them out, and we still haven't because Lincoln did. When the ones that wouldn't accept Lincoln as president when he was elected, yeah. a whole number of them will kick were kicked out of Congress, and that's what yeah. should happen here. Yeah, you know, I I can't believe with with what's going on. You know, we're sitting here and we're watching people get sentenced to a whopping sixty to seventy five days for a friggin' A, a failed coup attempt. You know, I don't yeah. care that I don't care that all you did was walk through the building. You you no the guy the, who got the guy who got sixty days. The guy who was carrying around Nancy Pelosi's podium. Yeah, but he's not, there's Incredible. all kinds of them. It's like right now the average sentence for these people is sixty to seventy five days in jail. That's and a that's load of horse shit. Make no mistake about it. If this was Black Lives Matter, we would still be mopping up the blood, and everybody who set foot oh in our capital would be in prison for at least ten to twenty years. It would have been a mass. Yeah, we would actually see exactly what it looks like when when you when you step up to the government. This is what you get. But now we see when you got Trump friggin' bootlickers stepping up to the government, that's what they get. And that's why, that's why you can pretty much count that there's gonna come a day when we see this again. When we see this again, because why why should I not storm the Capitol when my horse loses if all I'm gonna get 60 to 75 days? Hell, might be fine. Yeah, I, I don't know if you've had on my friend, uh, he's formerly with Lincoln, the Lincoln Project, Fred Wellman who now has started the beer hall project, but you should have him on John, because uh, the whole beer hall project is based on the beer hall putsch, you know, where Hitler originally tried to take power uh, and he was stopped. The police didn't join with him. They threw him in prison. Guess what? Uh, history will tell you he came back again. If these guys don't pay a price for what they do, if they are not taught that way, then they will do it again. And this like, 60 day garbage. I agree. I mean, Nobody they're should be getting less of, than years in prison. They're making fun of it. They're saying, "Ah, oh, well, you know what? Uh, I ate a lot of, uh, of 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 sandwiches and worked out and did yoga." I mean, that that one blonde female has already done her sixty days, and she's all but basically made fun uh, of of her sentence. I mean, it, and she'll benefit from it because she went there sixty days, but now she's famous, so she'll speak at CPAC, I'm sure, yep, yep, and she'll be yep. on the right wing, you know, gravy circuit, you know, like yep. like you know, Rittenhouse and every other scumbag you can find. And, uh, and yep. that's what, I mean. Ugh, so Kyle Rittenhouse is, it, Kyle Rittenhouse was just on a TV show saying, uh, at, saying that Biden should be apologizing to him. Fuck <laughs> off, you fucking punk. But see, that's he the actually thing. He called that's Biden and Biden didn't call him back. And I was like, yeah, you keep but waiting see, by the phone, you little prick. But, but see, that's the thing. Is it is it a person like that gets that kind of access? Are you kidding me? I mean, I know. you know, he, he absolutely they have allowed him. The Republican Party, the GQP, has tried to turn him into somewhat of a hero. He's not a hero. He's an absolute shit brick. His parents, his mother's a shit brick. And every damn one of yep. them, none of them's worth the shit, man. I, I tell you, man, it, ama it amazes me how we have a country that is under attack right now that are literally fighting in the streets to, to protect their sovereignty. And, and, and we've got these jackaloons over here that would gladly sign over their democracy to a friggin', you know, a, a Putin psychophant. 
and 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 replace our democracy with the friggin' you know authoritarian dictatorship. You know, as long as Donald Trump is at the head, or if if we keep going down this path, we deserve. We will deserve to friggin' lose our country. Yeah, well, I, you know, I wish I could just, disagree with any of that, but I can't. Well, well, you know how I started the show off. I, you know, uh, and I'll, I'll ask you both your thoughts on this. Is that, you know, all the all the Republicans were so appalled when Colin Kaepernick and other players took a knee. Oh, how dare they disgrace the American flag like that? And yet, those same freaking Republicans are okay with the insurrection, okay with Confederate flags being in the Capitol, and now they're supporting Putin. What a bunch of freaking hypocrites. Yeah. that's. I mean, could you be more intellectually dishonest? They're the biggest fucking liars. You know, it just, again, it, it's as, as you were saying before, Richard, like, you know, if it had been Black Lives Matter at the Capitol, they would, they would have been massacred and arrested. Colin Kaepernick, happens to be black if it had been somebody white you know who supported trump they'd find a way to be okay with it it's never there, there's no principles there there hasn't been for any of them for a long time it's it's if it's okay for them to do any they can smear their feces on the capitol walls which they did by the way i know and, you know six, and that's okay but colin Kaepernick, but you know what? i gotta ask you about that who does that i mean did they shit in their hand and then some like 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 i don't even understand how that works? I mean, how would that? Do you shit in the bag and then freaking? I, I like I don't look, get it. Look, when you kind of wondered that myself. <laughs> when you, when, look, it, look, when you are a toothless, inbred jackaloon like these people are, that's normal. I mean, that's how they are. You know, they they, they yeah. probably you know shit outdoors anyway. Uh, <laughs> I mean, look. First and foremost, they're mind numb. They're mind numbingly stupid. Uh, they fall for anything, and that's just how it is. Uh, it, but you know what's sad is that you're right. Is is you don't hear about that. You know, I, I want to know who rubbed shit on the walls. And oh, I by the too. way, you know that we have photographs, we have videos of all these people doing that. You know, if you think the only place where cameras are not absolutely there is in the offices of the members of Congress because they get a level of security and secrecy in their own offices. But everywhere else in that entire friggin' building is cameras on everything. And we already know that everybody who had one of these in their pocket, they can follow you through and then pinpoint exactly where you are on these videos. That's right. So how come James we Manley said that James James Manley says they carried it in Ziploc bags. How well, sick is that? Well, I mean, how awesome. Yeah. You know, well, good, good move, man. You know, was, was you outside? Did you have a friend holding the bag open for you while you filled it up? You worthless sacks of somebody shit. Was, somebody holding it below while they. Yeah, I exactly. Mean, again, as you said originally, who who does that? Uh, I'm begging they didn't even wipe. And says, I think I'm going to rub my. I just. Yeah, like, doing? yeah, yeah. What, where, I mean, what grade level is your brain at? That thinks that's going to be something, you know, that's something it, it, cool it, to do. But we're, we're not talking about, we're not talking about, you know, grade levels here. <laughs> These people are already stupid. I mean, you know, I tell you, you know, if you watch, I think his name is Jordan Klepper, and he's the one that always interviews these Trump bootleggers. Yeah, the one for the Daily Show, I believe, right? And, you know, yeah, you, right. You, got the, yeah, you got that one guy saying, I'd like to know why Obama wasn't around during 9-11 attacks. Maybe it's because he wasn't the fucking president yet, you dumbass. <laughs> you know, I mean, literally. I mean, if if, if there ever is a a, a a poster boy for what you know what happens when when mom and dad are brothers and sisters, it's usually at a Trump rally. <laughs> no, I mean, that, I but that's the thing. Like, it's funny. I mean, it's not really funny, but you bring that up. If they were to decide right now, the entire like right wing, you know, echo chamber of morons. Fox News and the Sinclair stations and Salem Radio and all, you know, to all repeat that Obama allowed 9-11 to happen. I promise you they could convince like two thirds of Republicans that Obama was president and it was, it was his fault. They, yeah, they could do it. Absolutely. Now, I want to say something real quick because Johnny Wright said something in the thing. Uh, Johnny Wright said, how much to tag along on a vacation with you? I'm getting ready to take off and spend about 45 days in Europe, and I'm going to go all over, and I'm going to go to places that's going to border Ukraine, uh, oh. Romania, uh, Slovakia, uh, Poland, and Hungary. 
Uh, but if you follow me cool. on Ojeda Live on YouTube, you'll be able to follow me as, as I'm going across Europe. So just to give that out there. So I didn't want to forget that. Mark OV, 193 thanks for five bucks. Don't forget the African-American woman who was sentenced to five years for, for mistakenly voting in Texas. Right. Her vote wasn't even counted. Yeah, yeah, that's the kind of double standard we have in this country. Uh, okay. Oh, meanwhile, Glenn Youngkin's son tried to vote illegally twice in uh, Virginia. I don't see him going to prison. No, no, and All we right. haven't, and we know that there are people that voted illegally, and we haven't heard of none of them being sentenced. But an African American woman who does it accidentally, five years right off the bat. Okay, I'm just gonna play this. This is the Brian Tyler Cohen clip of his interview with Joe Biden. Uh, and it's it's real quick. It's only like 25 seconds. So take a look. Okay. At the same time, we have someone like Donald Trump who's come out and praised Putin's savvy and genius uh, just in advance of him attacking uh, Ukraine. And other Republicans have rallied uh, to Putin's side as well. What's your message to Trump and others in light of Putin's attacks? Well, I think uh, I put as much stock in Trump saying that Putin's a genius as I do when he called himself a stable genius. <laughs> so, you know, you know, and that's the truth. I mean, see, Joe Biden, I don't know. I love the man. I mean, because he, because he, it's a great answer. I mean, <laughs> you know what I mean? Joe Biden is hitting home runs out of the park. You know, what's, um, what's sad is the poorly educated is the big problem in this country. The poorly, the people who never voted ever, who now all of a sudden vote because why? Because they got to stand up for their Donald Trump. But I mean, at the end of the day, you know, people know very, very little about what the hell's really going on. Uh, and, and it's That's absolutely true, I mean. sad. It's sad. Well, what was well, that? I mean? There was a, yeah, go ahead, John. Go ahead, go ahead, Cliff. There was some study. Well, I'm trying to think of what it is, uh, and I can't think of the number of people, but some large majority of people or something read at a sixth grade level in this country. And I mean, that kind of tells you a lot. West yeah. Virginia, West Virginia is fourth grade. The majority, <laughs> literally, literally, no shit, yeah. no shit. There's a significant population that is at the fourth grade level. And, and, and the thing is, is that, you know, that was what Donald Trump and them were able to tap into. And those are the people right now that absolutely will, will just, they eat up anything that is thrown their way. And, and yep. it's hard because now how do we combat this? How do we combat these people who now believe that, you know, JFK Jr. is going to come back from the dead? Uh, how do we combat these? I mean, if you're that stupid, it's not that easy to be able to turn you, you know, back to, the, to, to, to what's right. But I mean, what's weird about that is JFK and JFK Jr. were both Democrats. Both I don't Democrats understand. Democrats and, and, and very, very liberal, by the way. JFK Jr. was the, uh, the, the the magazine was called George, and he was yep. the editor-in-chief of the thing. You know, it yeah. was a very, very you know liberal magazine. But that's the thing. All you have to do is give the people somebody that, you know, the females can think is cute. And, 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 and all you have to do is promise that, oh, well, well this time he's going to come back and he's going to push Trump's values and these dumb asses will believe it. I mean, let me tell you something. One of the dangers that we have in this country right now, and I believe it's one of the most dangerous things that we have is stupidity because we got a yep. significant amount of people. We got a significant amount of people. We are 972,200 dead Americans to COVID. And we've got a significant amount of people in this country that say, that's a lie. It's fake. It's bullshit. Yeah. Yep. Got family members who have died. I know some of those people. Yeah, I do too. Shit, man. Uh, hold on. Uh, Betty Loco, uh, you know, my moderator, points out a great uh, – one of my moderators points out a great point. They hate that Joe Biden is a winner all the way around. Awesome. And the reason why that's great is because the same thing happened under Obama. You know, uh, uh, the Republicans hated Obama because not only was he so effective, he was so charming. He was so yep. He was so eloquent. He was so funny. And they hate it because because yeah. he was a superstar. He was everything they wished to be and couldn't be, especially and Trump. But here's what's really sad is that there's all kinds of things right now that are that are taking place, and these people are too stupid to realize it's not Joe Biden. 
You know, first off, inflation is a global problem right now. And oh, by the way, gas is going to go up significantly because of what's going on in Europe right now. And instead of people realizing that that's what's going on, they're automatically going to blame Biden because they're Republican people like Rand Paul and Ted Cruz and these jack loons are going to come out and blame it all on daggone President Biden. You know, yeah, they're, I mean, look, they're already doing it. They're blaming him for the war. I mean, they're it must be his yeah. fault. War. This crazy and, person did this. Yeah, what do you want? Do you, do you want us to put troops on the ground and start slugging that with Russia, which will most likely result in nuclear bombs going off? Is that what you want? But that's they the won't thing. Say, they won't say what they want. They don't have any solutions. That's the thing. No, they're, they're just they're, not they're, smart. That's a good point, Cliff. And Jasmania, Cliff, speaking of uh, superstars, uh, he says that, or she says that uh, she saw brian in a b movie yesterday from 2015 really oh brian oh i thought it was you cliff i, I thought i thought it was oh. you with him. no no i'm aware of but who knows man there was some time <laughs> no 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 i i thought it was you i'm you know i'm sorry i for some no, reason okay. i she meant to brian tyler or Co- I don't know. oh yeah Jackson. yeah i don't know I don't ask bon nutzen thanks for the um uh, twenty dollars in Norwegian krona. Oh, I guess you're from Norway then, instead of Denmark. Putin and Donald are stable geniuses. No shit, not yet. Yeah, yeah, I mean, c- come on. You know, like you almost want to think that Putin's smart, but this is a hell of a dumb mistake on his part. Now, now, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Putin completely thought everything out in a way that made him hailed as a amazing person. First and foremost, the majority of people in Russia, if you are not in Moscow or St. Petersburg, you struggle. Moscow and St. Petersburg are the two cities in Russia that are beautiful. And, and, and Putin wants to basically let those be the, you know, be the posters of Russia. Yeah. But the truth is, the moment you drive out of those cities, you see nothing but poverty. And the thing is, is that Vladimir Putin is, has a net worth of something like $200 billion dollars. And the, when, he's when robbed all their assets. Yeah. He's robbed yeah. their assets, and those people are struggling. And right now, Putin is trying to say, I've got all this money, and my people are having a lot of problems. They're struggling. They're starving. They don't have adequate water, adequate housing, anything like that. So I've got to come up with something that basically blames somebody. Right. And, and let me tell you something. This is not going as planned. He, he, he had no clue that Ukraine was going to basically say, fuck you, let's throw down because that's exactly yeah. what's happening. You know, every t- you know, I just I just saw a video a little while ago of a helicopter in flames going down. And I'll tell you right now, one of the things that uh, Ukraine is known for is the, the, the they're the ones that make a lot of surface to air missiles, uh, a lot of things ah. like, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and let me tell you something. These we are seeing bravery on a scale never seen. Yes, we are. We are seeing people that are saying, you know what? Get the women and children out, but everybody else, you stay, come to this location, and we'll give you a friggin' AK-47. We'll hand you a friggin' mine. We'll show you how to use it. Russia is about ready to find themselves in an insurgency that is going to be brutal. And I'll tell you, I know because I've lived through them. And they are That's what I wanted to ask you. Hold on a second, Major. Tony Macaroni, thanks for the 55 in Norwegian Krona. And now teachers are the targets and they are burning books. Education in the States are going reverse. We will touch on this, but I do want to ask the Army Major a question because since you did live this, and um, I, I don't know if you know this, Cliff, but uh, uh, Richard here you know, did four tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. For now, the fact that he was a... Uh, 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 you know, running for Congress, I, you know, and I pay attention to all that stuff from my job. I know your basic background and, you know, yeah, it's quite but, impressive. Not that you need me to tell you that, but. <laughs> so here's my question. See, this is what Cliff and I were talking about. The Ukrainians, this is their country. Just like when you were in Afghanistan, no one has been, ever been able to win a war against the Afghan people because you're in their country. They don't want you in there. So, um, so the question for you is, Army Major, these Ukrainians are, are not going to go down easy because they because they are fighting for their own country. You may win the battles, and we won all of them. We won every battle we fought. 
but it didn't stop them. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. They are still going to fight you. This is their home. This is their ground, and they are going to stand their ground. You may have the ability. What we are seeing right now in Ukraine is absolutely next level. You got 13 people guarding Snake Island, and they're told, put down your weapons yeah. and, <laughs> and, and surrender. And they said, go fuck yourself. And they all lost yep. their lives. They all lost their lives. You have a young man who had to destroy a bridge. But when he got to the bridge and started wiring it, he realized the only way he's going to be able to destroy that bridge before the Russians cross it is to sacrifice his life. And guess what? He sacrificed his life. And, wow. and you know, we already know yep. that the 13 people that told Russia to go fuck themselves and that young man that, that detonated the bomb while he was basically sitting on top of it are already receiving the highest uh, honors that you can receive in Ukraine. Let me tell you a little bit something about that. A lot of people have visions of themselves being better than what they could possibly be. Everybody has that, especially when you're in combat. You know, I can tell you there were times when, when I was getting ready to cross the border into Iraq, I thought to myself, we are going to slay these people. Everybody has those visions. But I'm going to tell you, what we're seeing is it actually come to fruition. These people are standing strong. A husband and a wife, young, a young man and woman take a knee and both of them get married. And as soon as the service is over, they stand up, they change their clothes, they pick up their rifles, and they both go together to fight wow. the Russian. Yeah, wow. Did you see the, did you see the video on. even of that grandmother who got in the soldier's well, face yes. and was saying, she get out there. of here and she, here's she, some sunflowers so when you die that something will grow? Or I mean, Something will grow. I played, it, I played that at the beginning of the show. Hey, look Look at I mean, the president. Look at President Zelensky. Look Look, look at the, the, uh, uh, the Klitschko brothers. Both the Klitschko brothers are world champion boxers. Yeah, they are heavyweight. world champions, and instead of leaving like they could because they're millionaires, they chose to friggin' put on camouflage and man a post. Wow! This I didn't know any of this. Earlier, yeah. I brought up earlier. I saw a picture of Miss Ukraine. She Miss Ukraine. Left She's out there with a machine gun. She, she, absolutely breathtakingly beautiful, and here she is in combat gear with her hair long, and she's hitting the damn streets fighting. This is what Russia is now finding themselves facing. And we also know that some of the Russian military had no clue. They were never told. Once they crossed into Ukraine, that's when they found out. And Russian military are, are surrendering in many cases. Yep. They're surrendering to these people. And I'll we tell were you. talking about you that. Know, they were just saying, we just yeah, that's a quick exercise. Thing. Yeah, yeah, we have, I mean, yeah I, that's right. And they're, and they're surrendering. You also have the ghost of Kiev. And good Lord, that guy right there, whoever he is, I'm sure that his days are numbered because Russia's going to scramble everything they can to take him down. But as of right now, this guy's gotten multiple. He's got like six air-to-air -air kills, and he's killed multiple tanks, BTUs, and all these other things. I mean, look, what we are, but the president, the president. Right the there, president. Tony Macaroni. Thanks for the $22 in Krona. The freaking president was in combat gear. Yeah, that's I mean, what you, that's what a leader. That's a leader. That's the guy that, that says, is. "I'm not going to get out of here. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to fight." And you know, what and I mean? Donald Trump, that. and Donald Trump, only president of the last five presidents to go into the bunker when the Black Lives Matter protests yeah. were holding up. Yeah, been limping away with bone spurs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, they would all of a sudden resurface. Oh, that bone spur. But but right. I mean, what we're seeing with Zelensky, I mean, this is what leadership looks like. And let me tell you something. Vladimir Putin would absolutely, he might as well cut his throat. If he kills that president, if he strikes and kills that president, that president will become a martyr. And let me tell yeah, you something, yeah. Russia will not be able to recover from this. People will go into Russia to go after them. The Russia will get invaded by friggin' Ukrainian, if, if by Ukraine, if daggone they do this bullshit. I'm telling you right now, what we're seeing in Ukraine is bravery that we haven't seen in a long, long time. I, no, agree I mean, it with looks you. like pictures of World War II. It really does. When you, it does, you know, it does. like that, the something. Battle of London and stuff like that. Is I mean, you know, Battle of the Bulge and some of these places where you just saw this hey, incredible bravery. And and let me tell you something. These are not weak people. These are not weak people. Soviets are not weak people. Anybody that grew up in the Balkans, anybody that grew up in areas that struggle are not weak people. So, you know, and, and, and they love their, their homeland. 
Uh, I'll tell you right now, man, these people are tough as nails. You got women, don't give a shit, pick up a rifle, and they'll fight to yep. the death. These Russians are, are, you know, Vladimir Putin, in his mind, had a vision of him doing this, getting away with everything, and everybody else bowing down because, oh, we're worried that if we even so much as remotely even get in Putin's face, he's going to launch nukes at us. First and foremost, there's people in Russia that right now are thinking, we're not going to continue going down this path with Putin. He's already destroyed nope. our economy. The people's money is friggin' worthless. Now, the ruble is tanked. Right now, you cannot get American dollars in Russia right now. The They're MasterCard, being downgraded. All of their bonds are becoming complete junk. Everything. Like, everything. I mean, the Russian oligarchs, the billionaires in Russia, have already lost literally tens of billions of dollars. Let me tell you something. When the poor people struggle, they don't give a shit. But when yep. they struggle, we got a problem. And right now, it's when the elites, it's when the elites turn on him. That's like, right. What's his name? Roman was Abramovich. Harry Browns. I just had to hand over Chelsea, the, the the soccer team in the United Kingdom. He's trying to put it in some foundation or some whatever because they're gonna they're, they're, because of their sanctions, they're not gonna allow him to own it. Yeah, now, I mean, yeah. like these guys are when these guys start, you know, suffering yeah, in that way. The, and all of this happened because Putin is trying to hide the fact that he is worth $200 billion while the rest of his people struggle, and he's trying to blame it on other people. When his people are realizing we're struggling, but that son of a bitch has gotten everything. And anybody he might turn ever, on him. He, anybody I would ever, love for them to go into the prison and get um, uh, Navalny out of there because he yeah. would be the next president. Well, you let know, me tell you let me tell you something. That's a possibility. I can guarantee you right now there are people in Russia that are going, maybe we ought to look at this guy. Because if Vladimir Putin's going to be the guy that's going to be loose with, you know, the nuclear weapons, then he's not the one that they want. This was a horrible mistake for Vladimir Putin. And even China, and this is what's really amazing. Now, of course, China's not saying that, that Taiwan is a sovereign nation, but even China has come out and said that Vladimir Putin was wrong for attacking a sovereign nation. That's and they wow. supported him originally. So yes, they did. Yeah. It shows you which yeah. way the wind is blowing. Well, it's like yeah. this too. You know, India, they, they now say that India is kind of leaning like it wants to kind of support uh, Putin because obviously Putin's going to need some things and, and why not? But let me tell you something. It's only a matter of time before, before India goes, you know what? Uh, we may get away with it now, but the repercussions later may be what it, sinks us all. It would not so, be a good move. Hold on a second. CR is, is a very good point. She contacting the, the her local Ukrainian center to see how to help. Uh, you know, I commend that. Mark Harley, I don't understand this. Uh, thanks for the five buck quid. Um, Zelensky as president is the same as John Stewart as president. Zelensky is a former comedian. Yeah. Oh, so, I didn't know that. And that's what's even more incredible about this bravery is like you know where it came from. I mean, the guy was a was a comedian, and now he's you know. Hold on now. Hold on. You you can't say that. You know, John's a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. John, I'm not saying that John, John would, fist fight you. Yeah. Yeah, no, John would John would be out there. I think with like Rambo, like the two under each gun. Oh, I would. Hey, you know what? I I don't. You know, I don't fear dying. If 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 I were a Ukrainian, I would definitely be in combat gear, and you know, I would definitely be there. I don't. I don't doubt it for a second. It's true. Yeah, I mean, look, I would, I, and I don't. You know, I never sit there and try to say, you know, try to be the one who's like, oh, I'm so courageous. I'm so, but. Shit, man. I mean, if if I'm sitting there living in Kiev and and this guy's attacking my city, I mean, what are you gonna do? Of course, it's you're gonna take it. It's your home. Exactly. This is your home. This is your family. This is your life you made for yourself. And this guy came to destroy it. I, I'm yeah, I have no imagine, doubt in my mind. Imagine yeah. knowing that your mother and your father and your brothers and your sisters had to pack everything that they owned in a bag and then get on a bus and try to make it to Poland before these assholes storm the capital and, and probably will ransack the place. will take yeah. anything and everything that is not, that is not tied down. They will, you know, it's going to happen. Uh, but, but make no mistake about it. It's not going to come easy because those people are going to fight for their home. And I'll tell you right now, 
they may have, you know, Russia may have superior firepower, but I'm going to tell you right now, we had superior firepower in Iraq and Afghanistan, and it didn't stop us from losing lives. You know, let me tell you something. An IED is, 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 can be made very easily, and all you have to do is stick it about a foot under the ground. And let me tell you something. If you think that the people in Ukraine aren't working on those right now. I mean, they've already, the president has already told them, put together Molotov cocktails. And I'm going to tell yep, you, yeah. you see somebody launch a Molotov cocktail successfully down the turret of a tank. Let me tell you something. It's going to make all those other tank operators shit their pants. Because yeah, that I, was, was, I, be I was reading that too. One of the, it's either one of their distilleries or, um, or, or, breweries that makes beer. I'm trying to remember what it is, but they've switched over to now just produce mass producing Molotov cocktails. Yeah. And how about, you know, cause I, I was just watching uh saving Brian, save, saving Brian, private Ryan last night. How about sticky bombs for all the tanks? I mean, I mean, you know, like, I mean, I'm a sapper and, and I am absolutely trained in, 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 you know, things like that. I will tell you, there are so many things out there that can be used to defend yourself that are downright cruel. As a matter of fact, some of those things are actually against the Geneva Convention, but it's not against the Geneva Convention when you are being attacked and you mm. use them to defend yourself. If somebody puts together a grape shot, you know, and fills it full of glass, and, and let me tell you something, when that explodes, it will riddle your body with glass. And oh, by the way, you're not going to see a lot of it on x-rays. You're fucked. And that's that's against the Geneva Convention. But if Russia is invading Ukraine and Ukraine has to do what they got to do to defend their nation, let me tell you something, Geneva Convention yeah. ain't going to say jack shit about that because you uh, come here. Tony Macaroni, thanks for the $22 in Norwegian Corona. Trump being combat lift skirtle in a gimp mask. Um Another Norwegian asked Bon Knudsen, thanks for the 20 krona. Ukraine you're really popular in uh, offers... Norway. What? I said you're very popular in Norway. Yeah. Ukraine friend offers me tour after they win. I, I actually, um, I have family in Norway. <laughs> so it's, uh, I have family in hey, Denmark and Norway. <laughs> I, I, I hope, I hope that, uh, the, I, I really hope that Vladimir Putin sees the light and pulls out of this shit. Because yep. I'm taking off to Europe, and I'm going to go to four countries that border uh, Ukraine, which is which is Poland, yep. Ukraine. Uh, uh, you no, know, I'm sorry, Poland, Romania, uh, uh, Slovakia, and Hungary. But I'll tell you right now, if if they're if it's over with, it wouldn't bother me at all. I'll I'll fly into Kiev. It wouldn't bother me at all. I, I could imagine you being like Rambo, Richard, and I, I, just I, grabbing I, grabbing one of those big freaking machine guns and just taking people out. No, no look, I'm I'm not trying I'm not trying to get involved in anything. But if but if Vladimir Putin pulls his troops back like he should, it wouldn't bother me at all to fly into Kiev. I think that would be a great episode because we're going there to do a lot of videotaping, and I'd love nothing more than to interview these people and and post stuff like that. I mean, I'd be yeah. I'd risk it for something like that. But at the end of the day. You know, I, I understand because in Iraq, we we fought an insurgency and, and we fought people that basically you give them twenty dollars and they'll put in an IED. And let me tell you something. We swacked a whole bunch of those people. The 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 the, the actual basically uh, 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 what was happening, anybody that was caught on the sides of the road with a shovel and even so much as touched the ground, they got popped. You know, but but the thing about it is, is that, you know, it was their home. People in Afghanistan, the poorest place on the earth. You know, the reason why you can't defeat them is because they they just it, they they will not stop, and they have a belief that if they die fighting you, they go automatically to heaven. So you know, it's it's the mentality of these people. And uh, look, Ukraine is 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 fought, feeling the same way. They're going to fight and defend their land, mm -hmm. and and Vladimir Putin had no clue that he was going to find this. They thought that that gun, it was going to be, I interviewed a guy from Ukraine two nights ago. And the first thing he said basically was, you know, today a lot of Russians died. He was happy about it because in the initial number count, it was 57 Ukrainians had been killed and 50 Russians had been killed. Let me wow. tell you something. That's not exactly yep. the numbers you would think of when you're talking no. about 
the second largest military in the world versus a place that literally has very little, very little. 93,000 military with another, you know, 200,000 reservists. That's it. That's all they got. But they'll tell you what, man, there's some tough Muldoons. Um, <laughs> Cliff, let me ask you a question. Uh, sure. The Republicans, as we can see, have been like pro Putin, like Laura Ingram and all these, and the Tucker Carlson. Yeah. Now, at what point do you think, you know, it it's going to turn on them? Like, do you think that that you know that uh, the media and maybe even the Republican people here in this country are going to start to go, you know what, this doesn't. Is is there a chance that leading up to the midterms, this might hurt them? I think absolutely there is. And I mean, again, I, what I was saying earlier is you can see it because some of the, these 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 cowards on their side. I mentioned J.D. Vance is one of them here in Ohio. But, you know, there's a whole bunch of them who came out initially and either said they didn't care about Ukraine or they thought Putin was right. And they're all backing off. And even even little wimpy, you know, frozen food air Tucker himself the other night on on Fox started saying some things that were much more pro Ukraine which makes me think th that they're reading you know yep. polling they're well, seeing these numbers and they're seeing the the sport collapse for, for But people. it's also not just that and that's that's really good that's a big point but also understand that right now investigations are underway to look for any connection any ties whatsoever with these russian oligarchs and our news media in america wow yes. is that yeah. true that's absolutely true so if 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 fox news shows that it gets funding from russian oligarchs there's going to be repercussions here and that's what's going on right now that investigation is going on right now i did not know that did you know that cliff no, I mean, I guess, are you saying, is this because of the sanctions? Is that why the, it, it, the it's, investigation? It's part, of, it's part of the sanctions, yes. It makes they're sense. Making, I didn't think about they're it. Making yeah, sure, they're, yeah, they're making sure that nobody, nobody from Russia is going to get any damn thing. And and the best yep. part about this is, is that would be what we need to know. Oh, really? So you're saying that Russian oligarchs own this much percent of Fox News? And, and and that's something that the people need to know. All these these right wing publications, you know, nobody knows who funds them, and yeah. they're being, you know, I mean, we'll, we'll find we maybe we'll find out some of that stuff too, because yeah. they're all just fronts. But Cliff, why why does Rupert Murdoch hate America so much? Uh, I don't know that he hates America. I think he literally is just the, one of the greediest people alive. Why does I he like Russia? Think, I don't think he gives a shit. I think as long as the ratings are high, that's all that matters. To him. Is he pro-Russia? He's pro-Russia if it makes him money, I think. That's right. First and foremost, they, when you get to a certain level, you know, you may claim, you may have grew up in the United States of America, but once you get to a certain level of wealth, it, you don't give a shit. You pretty much are a, you're a citizen of the world because you can yep. fly anywhere in the world. You can live anywhere in the world. And no matter where you go, you can get away with anything that you want in this world. And that's how people like Rupert Murdoch and them are. They don't give a shit. As long as they, they're going to look at the side that's going to give them the most money. And, and, and it really doesn't matter. They're always going to go with the side that gives them the most money. So if they think that they can benefit this way, they're going to do it. But that's why they right. Or if he thinks his ratings will be higher by being yeah. pro Russia, he's, you know, that's all. I mean, it's the same thing with all the COVID stuff, getting all their viewers killed. It's the same thing with the insurrection. They don't give a shit about anything except for money. As long as the ratings are high and they're making money, that's what they care about. And, well, and they know that these dumb people will will continue supporting them, even even yeah. from the damn even from their deathbed. But did you yeah. see that Marsha Blackburn changed God changed the subject just a little bit? So Joe Biden appoints the first uh, uh, black female Supreme Court justice pick. Mm -hmm. uh, Republican Marsha Blackburn. I don't know if she's a senator or a congressman. Yeah, senator from Tennessee. She comes out and goes, oh, we shouldn't appoint someone while there's a war going on. Fuck you. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like how many They've always got some bullshit going... excuse when it's a Democrat. It's amazing. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That's not a point. But but yet we've been at war for twenty years, and they had no problem with Kavanaugh, with uh, Barrett, and 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 you know they're all a bunch of shit bags. I mean, they really, they're so full of it. The only problem they have with Kavanaugh is, is making sure the FBI didn't investigate all the damn claims against him. Yeah. That, yeah, that there's so it. much. You know what, Cliff? I don't recall, well, you know, I know that there's always corruption in politics, but I have never seen so much really coming from only one side. It. I mean, it's. it seems like the Republican Party has become the party that is corrupt. Like, like you don't hear these stories as much on the Democratic side. No, I mean, are there some corrupt Democrats? Of course there are. But there, but if it, it's like flypaper now for all of the most socially disordered people in terms of personality. Have you committed domestic abuse? You'll be safe from the Republican Party. Have you have you picked up 17-year-olds and trafficked them like Matt Gates? You'll be safe from the Republican Party. Like Donald Trump, did you wander through, you know, changing rooms with, with young girls? Did you, you know, during... The past, did you did rape you, a minor? Did you right. rape your own wife? Exactly. Right. Like I mean, again, at some point, they all, it's like flypaper for the worst elements of our society. They all realize that, that this is a place where they can do anything. And so the corruption is the same thing. I'm not saying there aren't some corrupt Democrats. Of course there are. But if you really want to, like, if you want corruption to be kind of like your credo, <laughs> what, what it is that motivates you, that's the Republican Party at this point. I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, the the Republican Party wants to paint the Democrats into this, you know, uh, cabal of, of 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 pedophiles. But understand, I challenge anybody to go and look at politicians across the country, at let's say state level legislators, and up to Congress, all of the people who have been caught. Uh, sex trafficking, uh, with with sexual assault, with kitty porn, with incestual relationships, you're going to yep. find that it's literally twenty to one Republicans. I mean, it's like the Republicans are trying to project their crimes over towards the Democratic Party, and it's them that are the ones that are getting arrested. It's happening literally. I I, I went and I did a little research. And I had six pages that I read one night on my live about the names and these yeah. people that were part of this person. Literally, there's like at least three state Republican Party heads that were the Republican leaders for Donald Trump's 2016 election that have went to prison for friggin' yeah. kitty porn. Kitty porn. Yeah, one of them was a judge in northern Kentucky. I'm in Cincinnati across the bridge. One of them was a judge there. A Republican judge, and he was a, one of the co-chairs of Trump's campaign in Kentucky, in yeah. prison for kitty porn. Kitty Remember porn. Roy Moore, who ran for the U.S. Senate, right? Yep. Remember him? He was calling a girl in her trig class, asking her to come meet him. Generally, a good rule of thumb is if you're calling somebody in their trig class, they're probably too young for you. Yeah. Um, for every you know, 20 I mean, of them, we have one Anthony Weiner. That's pretty exactly. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's really true, because I've looked into some of it for things that I've written and stuff that I've done, too. And I mean, it's 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 overwhelming. And here in Ohio also, we've got Jim Jordan, who may not have himself engaged in this. He just knew that it was going on at Ohio State and yeah. that his own players were being molested by a doctor and turned that makes right him to... that makes him guilty of negligence. I I agree. He's he's as bad as the it, guys it doing does. it as far as I'm it, it, it does. And you know, I believe there's a lot of people in Ohio that absolutely uh, are are living at that. But the problem is is that you know the people in Ohio allow him to be in the most gerrymandered between him and Dan Crenshaw. Those yep. are the two most gerrymandered districts in the entire country. And all you yeah, have Jordan's to do is Jordan's district at, is ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. ridiculous. It, they literally drew the lines. Well, this person's a Democrat, so don't go around, don't put their house in his, but the next door yep. neighbor is, so put them in the, in the, in, in his district. I mean, it's absolute bullshit. But again, like, uh, you, and again, you really can go on. I'll say quickly, because I mean, if you think about it, Donald Trump, uh, we talked about, underage girls and all that sort of stuff. I mean, they're, they're la the longest serving Republican speaker of the house. Denny Hastert went to prison for molesting underage boys. I mean, like, again, y y you know, these, these aren't small time figures in their party. These are U S senators and congressmen and longest serving speaker and their last president. And I mean, you know, uh, 
Uh, Lulu girl, thanks for the five bucks. She says, thanks, John, Cliff, and Major Ojeda for giving me my Trump bashing fix today. Much love from Michigan. And here's one that you guys, I, I'll be excited to get your opinions on. Tony Macaroni, <laughs> thanks for the Norwegian uh, kroner of $55. Uh, dollars. Um, Marjorie Trailer Green, uh, but he calls her Marjorie Trailer Gimp, speaking at the white nationalist rally. Yeah. Thought Dudes. Well, I've always called the Republican. Look, Eric Swalwell, the congressman, was on my show, and I point blank asked him, has the Republican Party become the party of white supremacists? And he goes, yeah. Yeah. And look, now you have a fucking congressman speaking at a freaking yeah. a white nationalist. I she, mean, she claims she didn't know. She's like, I, I mean, I haven't heard him speak before about Nick Fuentes, the leader of that. Oh, I don't know. Oh I mean, I just, shit! Like, you know they what? have these this thing called the internet. She she probably could have read it. Well, you yeah. know that's the thing. That's the thing. You know, there's no excuse when you are a member of Congress. Understand that you have a staff. Your salary. You may get a salary of a hundred and 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 seventy four thousand or a hundred and ninety four thousand dollars a year, but you have over a million dollars that you get to spend on staff salaries. So you hire yeah. all of your staff and you're not going to tell me that she didn't have plenty of people that look into everything and anything that she's supposed to do and explain to her, excuse me, but this is probably something you don't want to do. Yeah, Everybody has staff. It's impossible. Yeah. I've been a I agree. Agree. director, you know, for statewide officials and on campaigns and all that. There's just, I, I would have looked into, I did when, when I did those things, looked into all of that. There's just yeah. no way that gets by you when, when you know when it's one of your people and you work for them and they're going to go speak somewhere. You you make sure to know every damn thing about it. And like it'd be one thing if this guy had something hidden from ten years ago. Like oh I didn't know the dude has been saying neo Nazi shit for for you know his entire life almost. So I mean that, it's it's right there. It takes one click. Of Google. It's grounds for firing. If you're a, if you're a member of Congress and you find yourself speaking at an event that turns out to be a KKK rally, you can fire and and literally everybody would say, "Hey, completely understand it. Fire your entire damn staff." But right. the thing is, is but she Marjorie, won't because she wanted but, to be there. So but she, yep, she won't because she wanted to be there. And on top of that, she probably hired people that you know are friends with her. That were the other people speakers that are there. qualified. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's a big difference between that's that's why you don't hire your best buddy. You hire people that are going to get the job done. That's just the way. All right, all right. Thanks for the uh, $4 super sticker. I have questions for you guys here. So I just wanted to get to those. Uh, let me see. Uh, hold on. Um, I had some questions here. I have to find it now because uh, uh, let's see. Hold on. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, here's one for you there, Army Major. Uh, could you please expand on thermostatic weapons? They don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. You know, oh, if I, if, that if makes three of us. If you're talking about uh, weapons that uh, create heat, uh, and I'm talking about like can 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 fry shit, uh, they they exist. Well, uh, I don't get how that glass bomb works that you say. You put it in a, like a jar and then just put gas in there. I mean, how does a that Molot work? A Molotov cocktail is. Oh, but you put the glass in there. Uh, no, 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 no. This is something like it's it, it's basically a claymore mine. It's a homemade claymore mine, and oh. you can you can fill it full of nails. You can fill it full of tacks. You can fill it full of glass. And when okay. it goes off, it's 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 ugly. And I'll tell you yeah. that that field expedient. Homemade stuff is a lot more effective than the actual stuff itself. A Bangalore torpedo will basically open up a three to five foot path through wire and anything else. But a field expedient Bangalore torpedo where you take U-shaped pickets and you pack it full of C4, huh, you'll be able to drive a bus through that shit. Uh, uh, you know, Ziggy has a good point because I watched this video and I'd like to get your opinions, uh, Cliff and Richard. Ziggy says, uh, I believe that Marjorie Trailer Green is the January 6th pipe bomber. You know, if you watch that video, I think it's her, man. I, I, all I can say is from seeing the video, whoever it was moves a lot like her. 
Yes. You know, I, I will say I have no proof. I don't know for sure, but I, I, I got to say, it certainly that video didn't rule it out. <laughs> Yeah, it, it didn't help her cause of denying it, that's for sure. But but yep. at the end of the day, too, you know, she's not a smart person. And I'm thinking that if she had one of these in her pocket, then they absolutely can pinpoint her, pin, pinpoint her that's there. That's true. Uh, I mean, that's, that's what I've loved about all the right-wingers, you know, acting like such morons over the vaccine and saying, oh, they're going to put these trackers inside of you. And I'm like, you walk around with a fucking phone on you every I know, day. I know. Where they can we had people. exactly where you are, you moron. I mean, yeah, we had people on January the 6th at the airport going, you've ruined my life. What do you mean I don't have a, you can't let you can't fly me back home. By the time they made it to the airport after leaving the Capitol, they were already flagged as do not allow on a plane. Right. You know? <laughs> I mean, if you want to go like live in a tree, you know, in a tree somewhere, you know, and 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 uh, eat eat the plants or the branches or whatever, then maybe you can get off the government tracking you. But otherwise, give up on it. All right, yeah. stop freaking out about it. If you have any modern technology, they can find you. They got you. Uh, this is a great little point. And thank you, Joni Heisenberg. She helps me so much with the research on the show. Uh, Liz Cheney is calling for Green to be expelled after her speech at the White Nationalist event. Wow. Good for Liz. On, uh, uh, fantastic. I hope that, that but let's see it democratic yeah. messaging. We need all of us to come out over the next 72 hours and nonstop call for the damn thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and then, but that's the thing is the Republicans, the Republicans don't care. We already know, you know, there's enough evidence out there that's stacked up against Matt Gates being a pedophile. Uh, you yep. know, the Republicans are right now. They're saying, you know, he may or she may be corrupt, but she's one of ours, and we need the numbers. So that's yep. what they're doing. They're basically rallying around the the worst of the worst and saying that, hey, we need the numbers. So no matter what they do, you know, let's go after President Obama for wearing a tan suit. And let's leave Matt Getz alone for sex trafficking a child across state lines. So, yeah. And you know what? Yeah. If you're a Republican, if you're a Republican, you know, you've got Clay Higgins, that sack of shit from Louisiana. Oh, God. You got, you got all these people that are Republicans. And yet, where are they? Why are they not coming out saying, hey, man, you know what? I, there's a couple things that I draw the line on. You know, if in prison, in prison, if you touch a friggin' child, your ass is marked for death. Prisoners will not tolerate a bunch of perverts. But yet our Congress, they the Republicans will. With it. The Republicans hey, check this out, guys. Uh, uh, Zelen Zelensky tells U.S. I need, ammu I need ammunition, not e evacuation. I wonder if, if we could do that. Germany is giving them... Uh, uh, Germany... Uh, uh, our relents on weapons shipment to Ukraine will also send we fuel. So we are too. Are they, we are are they finally free. doing it because Germany was we holding had, off for a while. Yeah, well, not just Germany, but America. America is now uh, 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 launching a, th uh, I think it's a three hundred fifty million dollar package to Ukraine. Uh, that's that's with with armaments and things like that. And now this is this is amazing to me. Former Ukrainian president takes up uh, a Kalashnikov. No, Kalashnikov rifle to fight the Russians. I mean, this is like, you know, uh, unbelievable. I mean, these people, these people yeah. are heroes. They are. And, 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 and let me tell you something. That's I mean, the people that live and come from those areas are not people that you can push around. I mean, these are people that grow up rough. They don't have a lot. And I'm telling you, these people are naturally tough. You know, when I was in Afghanistan, I, I, I can remember I was with the sniper team and we were moving through the mountains and we come across an enemy hide site that had demo in it. And I was like, I'm not going down in there. I could see the wires. And I said, I'm not going down there. So what I tried to do was I tried to call and get a J dam to bust the bunker. We didn't have no air support at the time. So they told me there's nothing they could do at that time. So I contacted down below the unit that we were providing overwatch for, and there were some Afghan people in that. I watched two Afghan people climb all the way to where I was, jump into the hole, run in there, and then come out and hand me all the friggin' shit that was wired up. And I was like, are you kidding me? 
let me tell you something. When you come from places like that, so where sad, you don't yeah. have a lot, you don't have a lot, everybody's poor. So there's nothing that really can differentiate you from anybody else except bravery. That's what we're seeing. These people are saying, send my wife and kids out. Yeah. We're going to fight here and we're going to fight to the death. Every bravery, single determination. Died, yep. You know, everybody that dies. In and country Ukraine, loyalty. Yes, uh, every single person will be remembered forever throughout history. Their names will be on monuments forever. Uh, Michelle Marie uh, Zelensky is an amazing president. Andrea Brower, uh, why can't they let Ukraine be added as a part of NATO? Wouldn't that give Ukraine more protection? Why can't they do that now? Does well, anyone know that? that? Here's the thing. This is another reason. This is one of the excuses why President Putin is saying he's doing what he did. Because President Putin does not want NATO members on his border. But it doesn't work out that way. Poland is a now is a member of NATO now. There are other there's other countries that are members of NATO. Estonia, Latvia, uh, 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 Lithuania. You know, there are countries that used to be part of the old Soviet bloc that no longer yep. want to be that way. Don't, you know, Vladimir Putin has made this excuse, but it doesn't hold water. Vladimir Putin knows that his ass is getting caught and everybody knows that he's the filthiest rich person in, in Russia while everybody else is struggling. And he doesn't want people to realize that he's been just basically taking from everywhere. While everybody the Russian people, Cliff, do the Russian people know that Vladimir Putin has all this money? Almost none I would be my guess. I mean, remember, what? he controls almost none do, but maybe now huh. more will find out. And again, this is where I think some of this can backfire because yes. there are people that will now take risks, uh, like the people who are marching for peace in Moscow and ever that they would not have taken before. They're inspired by what they're seeing. And maybe now, you know, there will be people that, that all any kinds of sort of controls he has on certain internet sites, on cable, on this, on satellites, on, you know, whatever it might be. There may be people now willing to stand up and get real and, and work harder, risk their lives to get real information out of people. I mean, you just can't, you know, I'm sure, you know, the, the good major here can talk more about it and probably saw these kinds of things, but acts of bravery inspire other acts of bravery. And when you see this guy, as you know, we were just talking about, you know, who gave his life to blow up this bridge. Yeah. You know, when you see that, that inspires people even across the world to do things yeah. they might otherwise not have been, been had the strength to do the willingness to do. And so, I really do. I think this is going to backfire in a major way. And I think most people don't know, but I think a hell of a lot more people could know, for, you know, in the coming months about what, what Putin's done. And, That's my and, hope. and is, is the United States giving them, uh, 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 you know, supplies and weapons? We are sending them a $350 million package and that's already oh, been I, announced. Yes. I had it. So, what was Putin's uh, uh, reaction to that? I don't I give a shit. But. I haven't really, but I'll tell you right now. You know, remember when, when Russia was in Afghanistan, if you ever watched the movie Charlie Wilson's War you know, Crazy. with Tom Hanks, let me tell you something. What we were doing was we were providing them with that gone the you know, Stinger, 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 Stinger missiles, missile right? package. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell you right now, that's what I saw today, a freaking helicopter completely engulfed in flames going down in Ukraine, and it was a Soviet helicopter. And I'm going to tell you right now, first off, Ukraine is known for making shit like that. So I'm telling you right now, it's not going to be a walk in the park. And, and, and like you said, every single person that dies fighting for Ukraine is going to be martyred. And it's going to yeah. be remembered and it's going to, I mean, they've already said that the 13 people that told Russia to go fuck themselves and the guy who committed, basically, he basically committed suicide in order to, to make sure that the bridge would blow are already going to be basically named and presented with the highest honors that exist in Ukraine. I mean, when they finally know, kick these assholes out, they need a statue like our Iwo Jima one with putting the yeah, flag in. Yeah. Of oh, those there 13 be. guys. Yeah. There will be. There well, will also, be. just let me ask you one last question, and then I got to go because I, because I have my other show or two. Um, uh, when this is all over, do you think that Ukraine will become a part of NATO? Probably not. I, I, I don't think so because I think that's one of the things that they're talking about. You know, if that's what is going to keep Russia, you know, but – I, I think, you know, one of the people said, you know what we ought to do? We ought to make them a, a NATO member now, just announce it that they're NATO. But I think yeah. that part of 
the discussion of getting Russia to get their shit and leave might be basically saying, okay, look, we'll never ever become a member of NATO, but you're not going to ever try this bullshit ever again. Right. Ever again. I will say this, whether they become a member of NATO or not, I don't know. I think this has changed the whole trajectory maybe of the world, quite frankly. And I think Vladimir Putin's days are now numbered in a way that they were not before. I think had he not done this, but I think he's now united the entire world, including a lot and a lot of his country inspired them against him. And a lot of these elites who are losing money are probably having private conversations. And I think his, his days are are numbered. I really do think that. Let me just say this. Bernie Madoff, like many others have always stole from the people. But what got Bernie what got Bernie Madoff put in prison for the rest of his life was that he stole from the rich. Once he stole yep. from the rich, they said no. Rich people steal from the rich people take your your retirement packages and they file for bankruptcy and screw you out of everything all the time. Rich people steal from the poor every day. But when you steal from the rich, they will fuck you up. Ashbon Nutschen, thanks for the uh, $50 in the Norwegian Krona. Norway has bought it with the Russians. We have great relations with them until now. We are blessed to be part of NATO. Uh, USA, thank you. Thank you. And then Lauren Ipsum, thanks for the five bucks. Guys, Cliff, again, plug anything you want to plug. I got to get out of here. <laughs> just uh, just say quickly, uh, you know, quick, at Cliff Schechter on Twitter. Come find me. me and we'll talk more like this. And Wes Webb. <laughs> Thanks for becoming a YouTube member. Listen, um, uh, Cliff, I know it's hard to get you sometimes, but I love when you're on, so please come back again. Army Major, what do you want to plug? Oh, Jet Alive and Cliff, awesome, awesome to finally get to meet you, man. Good to get, good to meet you too, my friend. All right, now I got to go do my beer on the balcony. So Patreon members, it's, it's going to be a wild ride. All right, guys, I'll see you. Airborne. Take care. All right. Thank you, everybody. I want to thank my moderators. Uh, Nikki B and Benny Loco. I want to thank my sponsor, um, betonline.ag. I want to thank all the generous super chats that came in today. I really appreciate it. It's like you almost out, I think you did out Gonzo Gonzo, uh, who, by the way, is not mad at me. I did text Gonzo. He's like, oh, come on, John. You know, you know, I just had to go because my wife was home. (laughs) So there is no problem with me and Gonzo. All right, everybody. Now I'm going straight over to my – oh, and I want to thank my guests, the great Cliff Schechter and the great Army Major Richard Ojeda. Now I'll do my beer on the balcony with Mom. You'll love this. My old childhood friend, Danny. Oh, we'll talk about all the crazy things we did. I think he has – I think he's mentioned at least two or three chapters of my book, so it's going to be a fun beer on the balcony. All right, everybody. Uh, I'll see you from Florida. On Tuesday, this is Stuttering John saying, get, get.